My name is Madison. I am a housewife who is married for 12 years now. My husband, Kevin, whom I met at a party, is eight years older than me. My first impression of him at our first meeting was that he seemed serious. After first few dates, Kevin said in a serious tone, I want you to go out with me with definitely a marriage in our future. I continued our relationship with the intention of doing so. His serious and sincere personality was just as I had expected. When he proposed, he said, I've lived alone for a long time. I can take care of myself, so I just need your smile in my life. Hearing his proposal, I felt that I want to spend the rest of my life smiling with him. With this in mind, I said yes to his proposal. And, at my husband's request, I quit my job and became a full-time housewife. And so, our newlywed life began with full of happiness. However, after being married to Kevin, things happened one after another that I could not stop smiling about. The first was when I visited my parents-in-law's house to greet and meet. My father-in-law had already passed away and my mother-in-law Claire, who lived alone, said to me, I feel relieved now. Even if I need nursing care, I'll be fine now. To that, Kevin said, Since you only have sons, you were worried, but now we have a female in our family, so mom, you should take it easy. You should be thanking me for bringing my wife into the family. Kevin has a younger brother named Harry. Harry was still single and living far away. Huh? Am I a caregiver? I felt a little disappointed in their conversation, but then I laughed it off thinking it was how they joke around at Kevin's family. Kevin was a teacher, working from early in the morning until late at night, and also advising club activities on the weekends, so he was often away from home on weekends. At my husband's request, I quit my job when we got married and became a full-time housewife. I thought that supporting my husband, who worked hard at his job, was what made me happy. Looking back at this situation and thinking about it, I was young. Eventually, I became pregnant with our first child, William. It should have been a joyous occasion, but my husband didn't like the fact that in the early stages of pregnancy, I was constantly lying down. In a very cynical voice, he said, it's nice to sleep as much as you want every day, huh? There's still laundry to do. You'd better get it done. I am not sleeping in because I want to. I am pregnant, so that is why I am sleepy and sleeping. So why do I have to listen to your sarcastic comments about it? Besides, I thought you said you can take care of yourself and can do your own laundry. What did you say? You're sitting at home while I'm out working, and now you want me to do the laundry? You said you could do it on your own when you proposed to me. You liar! We would get into such fights that I would run away from home, but Kevin did not bother to chase me or stop me from leaving the house. Also, Claire, my mother-in-law, was troubling me. When I plan to go on a trip with my own parents while I still can before giving birth, Claire said, take care and have fun. When she said this, she was smiling, but as soon as she found out that the destination where we were going was a luxury hotel, which Claire wanted to go, she asked me, why don't you prioritize Kevin and I for this kind of trip? In fact, why didn't you take me? You have no common sense at all, do you? Over a letter where she wrote five pages of it, fully written. When I talked to my husband about it, he said, It's your fault for neglecting my mother. I'm taking care of your living expenses and I am supporting you, so you should have the common sense to give the priority to my parents. What is he saying? Besides, this trip was planned by my parents for our family from the very beginning, so I wrote back to Claire about it. Because of this incident, this led to both Kevin and his mother becoming more and more mean to me. And
around when my stomach was getting bigger. I worked on the farm and wiped the floors with rags until the due date because being pregnant is not being sick in bed. Don't spoil her just because she is in the last month of pregnancy. My husband, who took Claire's side, told me, You deserve this because you were slacking off from your household chores. Just because you got married to me doesn't mean that you can be slacking off and doing nothing. When I was resting because my back hurted due to being pregnant. As he said this, Kevin made me crawl on all fours on the floor of the house and sweep the floor with rags. Moreover, Kevin did not help me prepare for our child's birth at all. When my husband was relaxing at home on his occasional day off and asked him if I could go shopping for supplies, he told me, You have free time, so go on a weekday when you are free. Why should I go on my day off with you when it's crowded on the weekends? Don't try to make it only easy on yourself when you are using my money up. He said this to me while he was focused on his phone playing games. What the hell is he saying and what does he think about being pregnant and having a baby is about? I just wanted to grab his phone and just wanted to smash it and trash it, but I kept myself calm. Ever since we got married, Kevin was not kind to me anymore as he was before our marriage. But I kept calm because I thought Kevin would change back to being kind to me when he sees his first child born. At that time, I still believe that that will happen. Then our first child, William, was born. When I was in the hospital and the contractions were not getting stronger, Kevin asked, He is taking too much time to come out. What the heck? Then I didn't have to take a day off from my work for this. You should consider more about my work-life schedule. He mumbled sarcastically. Wow, at times like this, Kevin is still mean and say such horrible things. But then, since I was more concentrated on having the baby, I just ignored my husband. As the contractions gradually intensified and I was in so much pain and suffering, Kevin started eating garlic bread right next to me without any care to me. As soon as he finished his garlic bread, he became sleepy and started taking a nap. And to that, the nurse and I was just astonished at him and couldn't say anything about it. Anyways, Kevin was there to witness the birth of William and he even got to experience cutting the umbilical cord. Kevin became teary-eyed as he held William in his arms. And when I saw this, I forgot about how mean and horrible Kevin was and just felt happy and peaceful. But that was just for a moment, because after that, Kevin immediately left the hospital to go to work. I thought to myself that he couldn't even take a day off for this. But then at night, he sent me a text over WhatsApp which said, I told my class that our baby was born. He said that he had told his class every detail of the experience of me being in labor to delivery. I thought to myself, if Kevin ever has a surgery, I'll record the whole thing and spread it around. Since I was embarrassed by Kevin telling our sacred labor to his class, the thought crossed my mind for a moment. A few days later, Claire came to visit me with Kevin at the hospital, and she said something that was unforgettable to me. Congratulations! This baby is... Who does he look like? Of course, William looks like Kevin when he was a baby. You think so? Then there is no doubt about it, right? Huh? What does she mean about no doubt about it? I couldn't take it as anything other than there's no doubt that William is my husband's child. I thought, was it a mistake for my mother-in-law to have been born into this world? I was about to say what I thought just now, but I kept it in and just laughed it off without smiling. After Claire left, I asked my husband, What does she mean by that? But Kevin just brushed it off, saying he didn't hear our conversation. Kevin said, I don't think she meant it that way. Don't blame others for everything. Kevin took Claire's side, but I could not easily forgive Claire for this no doubt about it comment. 
After being discharged from the hospital, I went back to my own parents' house. My parents' house was only a 20-minute drive from Kevin and I's house, but Kevin only came to visit once every three to four days. Every time he visits and sees William, Kevin just said, Oh, he is just sleeping, and then just eats a lot of my mother's cooking and leaves without saying a word. My parents were also bothered by my husband's almost total lack of interest in William. They were concerned about Kevin, but since I just gave a birth to a child, my parents didn't say anything about how they felt about Kevin at that time. Then, on the day I was going back to home where Kevin was waiting, I asked Kevin, Please, can you come pick me up? And to this, Kevin responded, I am not your servant. You either come back home by yourself or ask your parents to take you home. I was so mad about how he responded that I called him several times and texted him several messages. And after two hours, he finally came to pick me up. If you are ready, let's just go. I'm too busy. You really can't do anything on your own. Kevin mumbled. He was in a foul mood the whole time when I was packing my belongings, getting ready to leave, and we returned home as if he was rushing and taking me away from my parents. I was so sad and disappointed that I had to leave my parents' place without even having a chance to thank my parents, and I really felt bad about it. To think about it, I probably should have given up on my husband at this point and leave him. However, at that time, I thought that Kevin would change if he lived with our beautiful child, but then I guess I was being too optimistic about the situation. As soon as I returned home, Kevin said to me, You are a mother now. There are mothers out there who can take care of themselves on their own, which you should be doing, not talking about what you can't do, but find a way to do things on your own. Are you a child? Even my students are better than you. I'm out there being busy taking care of my students at school, so don't make me take care of you and William at home also. He said this as he was irritated. And, by the way, all your cookings are bad. Mom's meal is the best, so why don't you learn from her? It's your job as a wife to take care and make your husband eat good food. Don't use pregnancy and William as an excuse to not do wife's jobs. You should take care of me better. Since you are not being helpful, this is interfering with my work. I think having a housekeeper is better than having you as a wife. You are really useless. Kevin is the one who is using William as an excuse and not me. In back of my mind, I thought Kevin should be cooking for his own and throw a pot to his head for his nonsense, but then I calmed myself down. Maybe it is pointless to say anything to Kevin anymore. At every time, Kevin would say things like, I work outside the home, or this should be done by the wife because it's wife's job. I tried not to say anything unnecessary. When I don't talk back and keep it to myself, then Kevin, for some reason, would start taking care of William even though it is a wife's job to take care of William. But he only plays with William when William is in a good mood, and Kevin never does anything that requires his hands, such as changing diapers, changing William's clothes, or brushing William's teeth. And when William cries at night, he just yells, Make him shut up! I have an early morning tomorrow! Yet, outside the home, Kevin pretends to be the father who takes care of William a lot more than I do. Who does he think he is? He is a teacher, but he doesn't seem to know what taking care of a child means. Maybe it is best for me to get a divorce from Kevin. I thought that, but then, at the same time, I thought that it is my job to protect and raise William as a wife. Besides, my husband used to be a kind man. Maybe if his busy period is over, maybe Kevin will calm down and maybe change. No, I am going to change Kevin and I can. And these thoughts made me continue my married life with Kevin. A few years later, William grew up well and entered kindergarten. 
I took this opportunity to start working part-time at a local supermarket. Of course, Kevin was against of me doing a part-time job at the local supermarket. You won't be able to balance the household chores and your part-time job in raising William. There is no way you can handle a job outside the house. To his comments, I was so mad, and I answered. I promise that I will quit immediately if you think I can't balance all of my jobs and shouldn't keep my part-time job. If I can balance and is capable to do all the jobs completely fine, then there should be no complaints from you, okay? Why would he say such thing when I used to do work outside the house before? Also, I had a higher salary than Kevin when I was working at the office previously. I didn't say this to him, but I promised myself that I will do whatever it takes to keep my part-time job. Years passed and it was time for my son, William, to start first grade. It's my first day of the class also, so I can't be there for William's first day. But you said the same thing when William entered kindergarten. You have never been to any of William's school events. You said when William starts his first day at his first grade, you will be there. Don't you remember? William's first grade ceremony was in the morning, and Kevin's school ceremony was in the afternoon. I asked Kevin if there is anything he can do to make it to William's first day, but then he didn't bother trying to do anything about it, so to that, I was at the end of my patience, and said, I've put up with you all this time, but don't you love William? I told you that I am very busy. Kevin, I work too now. You are just a part-time worker. After our argument, I asked him to write me a promise letter because he really couldn't attend William's first day as a first grader. The promise letter included, I will actively participate in school events from now on and I won't complain if you divorce me if I don't participate. After that argument, Kevin started showing up at William's school events as much as possible. But only in the morning of William's first practice match, or only for the first song of William's music concert. Even though Kevin participated only just a little part of the events and not the whole, since before Kevin never came to any of the events, people around me said, Your husband finally came! Even though he is busy, he made it! What a great husband! When I told Kevin about what other students' parents said about him, Kevin replied, See, I'm actually a good husband who takes really good care of William. Everyone knows it. And then, just get arrogant about it. Kevin was only just good at appealing that he was a good father taking care of William when he wasn't doing anything. He also praised himself for being such a good father to William and smirks about it which makes me annoyed. And whether it was the stress of work or something I have no idea about, Kevin's alcohol consumption gradually increased. When he returns from home, Kevin gets drunk and snores loudly on the living room couch every day. He doesn't take care of William, nor ask me on how William is doing at school or anything. Kevin has forgotten the promise he made me anymore, and he doesn't come and attend any of William's school events, or even graduation or first days of school. It was not uncommon for Kevin to be so drunk at night that even if I had told him something important, he would not remember it the next morning, or would not even remember hearing it in the first place. I began to wonder what is the point of living with Kevin anymore, so I started to say things I shouldn't have said when looking back to it. Why don't you participate a little more in household chores and being good father to William? You! Who do you think you are, earning and working as only part-time job? You can start giving advices and say your opinion to me when you start making money as much as I do. Are you kidding me? He growled at me in a manner I had never seen before. I thought that even if he was very tired, I should not have been told like this just because I asked my husband to be a father to William and asked for support for household chores. Kevin is able to make the money he is making right now because thanks to me, I do all the household chores. I clearly felt something snapping inside me. This is it. It's over. I started preparing for divorce without my husband noticing. 
I had no intention of giving up William to Kevin because I didn't want William to go through such a burden living with Kevin. So, I did several part time jobs, and in my spare time or at night, I would work at home to make more money just to not put William through the hardships with Kevin. To be honest, I became very dizzy and tired, but I had no time to spare to prepare for the divorce. I continued to take care of the house as usual, even though I had several jobs now for Kevin not to notice. But I stopped ironing my husband's shirts. I don't care if he wore a crumpled shirt. At that time, Claire became ill and required nursing care. Kevin and his younger brother were discussing what to do for Claire and her future. As I listened and heard their discussion, Kevin said, I'm going to have you live at my mom's place and take care of her because she's your mother now, too. He said this in a serious voice. What? Why? I have a job, too. No way. I don't want to. What do you mean you don't want to? It is your job to do so. In fact, I'm just surprised you haven't said anything about this situation or offered to take care of your mother. Aren't you aware that she's your mother too? Besides, part time jobs aren't real jobs. Wait a minute. We're not living in an era that just because I'm a wife, I should be staying at home taking care of only household chores and family. You don't want to take care of my mother? You have been living off from my earnings and not taking responsibility of being the wife. Don't call it a wife's responsibility for your own convenience. If you want to talk about responsibilities, then don't force me to take care of your mother without my permission. I had enough of this. You have crossed my line. I took out what I have been preparing for a very long time now. Here, the divorce papers. I'm quitting as your wife, so write your name here. My husband seemed surprised to see the filled out divorce papers, but he grinned and signed them, saying, I'll take our son anyway. I submitted the divorce papers immediately and left the house with my son. I then immediately contacted my lawyer. I asked my lawyer to contact my husband with the details I had already prepared in advance. Then to this, I got a response from Kevin. He said he wanted to meet with me and talk about it, but I already knew that Kevin would say such thing. I guess my husband thought that I would be the one who would cry and go back to him if we we're getting divorced, but that is not the case. I refused all contact and meetings with Kevin and proceeded for a divorce settlement. I had been preparing for this moment for a very long time now. I used all of my savings and cancelled my insurance to pay off my mortgage. Because of this, I had almost no savings. I was very lucky that Kevin only worked and left all the household finances to me. In addition to this, thanks to the promise that Kevin wrote and signed himself, if I don't participate in school events, Madison can get a divorce. Kevin couldn't really reject the divorce. Kevin sent me a text message saying, Screw you! I will forgive all the things you did right now and of being a bad wife in the past, so just come back home with William. But I texted back saying, You should be the one apologizing, you idiot! and just blocked him. In the end, I got the house in the form of property division and alimony for the moral harassment Kevin had caused, and he had to go back to his mother's house to live with Claire. He was about to force me to take care of Claire, but now Kevin has to do it on his own now. Since Kevin wasn't used to doing the household chores or be the caregiver, Kevin had to take leave from his job and his career, which he was very proud of, was cut short. My ex brother in law, Harry, who apparently planned to force me into taking care of Claire and planned only to come and check on Claire from time to time, is not only penniless, but didn't get near Kevin. Who is frustrated by the unfamiliar household chores and taking care of Claire, nor returned any of Kevin's calls. I think Harry plans to leave everything to Kevin. Besides, Kevin conveniently became single and he is the perfect caregiver to Claire. By the way, I have the full custody of William. My ex husband must have been disappointed about this because he had no doubt that William would choose him over me because Kevin is the one who earned more money than me. 
Dad hasn't played with me since I was little, and I don't want to be with him. This was what William had said to me. My son told me that he would work when he got out of high school to help me. But actually, even though my part time job was at a local supermarket, I quit the place after about a year and was able to go back to my old job where I worked before the marriage. And next month, I will be hired again as a full time employee, and my different job, which I was working at home, was going well. In fact, I now make more money than my ex husband. Kevin is paying the child support, so now I can let my child go down any path he decides to without any worries about his future. It was all thanks to you that I was able to work hard and concentrate on my job. I am sorry for what I did, and I hope we can start over. I received this letter from my ex husband through his lawyer. But it's too late now, isn't it? I temporarily unblocked my ex husband on WhatsApp and sent a message to him. Thank you for your letter. Your feelings were very well expressed. Then Kevin responded quickly. So you're coming back? Thank you. I can't wait. Then to his response, I responded. This is my final answer. Good luck taking care of Claire all on your own, and I will never see you again. With that message, I also sent him video of me burning his letter and blocked Kevin's number again. I hope that through taking care of Claire, Kevin will understand all of my struggles that I went through while I was married to him and live with the remorse for the rest of his life. But maybe a man like Kevin, he may never understand because he is that kind of a guy.